Hello, Couch Co-Opers, Couch Potatoes, and Couch Co-Dependents. This is the Couch Co-Op Show, and I'm your host, Ian. Please do me a favor and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Couch Co-Op Show is all one word, no hyphen! And if you cannot tell by the music... We're talking about Elden Ring. <laughs> oh boy, are we. Well, I shouldn't say we. <sighs> in 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 coming to terms with what I was going to do with this video game and trying to re figure out that this would be a longer maybe perhaps a longer term thing. Perhaps something I would like to like dive deeper into and expand upon this is going to be a review in progress over multiple parts multiple parts where we'll only be talking about this game the first part will be my journey to this game and my early adventures in the game and then where part two goes i, I have yet well, I have ideas where it's going to go, but I have yet to, I'm not going to share those with you now. So yes, let's get to it. Uh, I hope you're excited for this. Uh, I know I know one of my listeners is kind of excited, Mr. Death. Um, I hope this is the content you want. Probably you probably don't want just me talking about the game. I'm, I'm sure you you want to hear other people talk about the game, but I'm going to hold that up. You know, hold. There, I'm gonna hold off on bringing them in quite just quite you know right now. We'll get them, but you know, I'm really the only person on the couch playing this game, so uh, so I might have to source out for some other people you know to talk about the game with because you know you don't really want to listen to someone just kind of uh huh, yeah, uh huh. So this first episode is me and my journey to Elden Ring. And I figured where I would start is my complete uninterest in From Software games. <laughs> I feel like as many people, a lot of people just have not, I don't know. I mean, I've tried them. I, I remember trying Demon Souls way back on PS3. And I thought that was just, it was just totally not for me. Something that was just kind of ugly and felt clunky. And I just, you know. And brute and Demon Souls is brutally fucking hard, so I was just kind of like, I just it just wasn't for me, wasn't for me. Uh, didn't get into any of the dark. Never tried. I've never tried a single Dark Souls game. Uh, I think we got what Bloodborne for free, or did Jared let me borrow it? One of the two. Maybe Jared let me borrow it. That's probably. I don't think we ever. I don't think we ever got. Did we ever get it free on PS Plus? I don't know, someone send us in in a message or something. Anyway, I've tried Bloodborne. Uh, you know, 
My problem with Bloodborne isn't the gameplay, actually. I probably might have stuck around with it. I just... I find the art in that game oppressive, and I just don't like it. I think the, the, it looks gross. I don't care. It's not interesting to me. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that love that kind of... What is that? Uh, kind of gothic. Victorian. I, Victorian gothic? Is that the kind of... Uh, I just do. I just do not care about that shit. I, like the look is just, it's uninteresting to me. So I kind of I tried that game for maybe an hour and then just bounced off it and never came back. Um, so you know, I just have had this kind of just uninterest in from software games. I've tried other Souls Light games from other companies like Neo and Neo Two, uh, but didn't ever really care about those. I tried what's the the Mech uh, Surge. I tried. I tried the first surge. I tried the demo of Code Vein. So I've tried a bunch of these games, but for some reason they've just never, ever clicked with me. And I just thought that's all right. Not every game needs to be for everybody. You know, like racing games. People don't understand Gran Turismo. Well, you know what? Gran Turismo doesn't have to be for you. Gran Turismo is probably the souls of racing games. So you don't have to like, you can go play your Mario Kart or your fucking Forza Horizon silly, we'll reward you for nothing because you're a shitty driver video game. That's fine. That's, everyone has their type of video game and, you know, so I get it. I was totally fine with never having to play a, a FromSoft game. Enten, enter Elden Ring. Now when this game was announced, oh wait, you know, I should say Sekiro. Sekiro I almost wanted to play, but it sounded like that is the most hardest game they've ever made. And so, like, I would like to try that game, but I, I hear it's so brutally awful hard that I, I would probably just bounce off it really quick, too. So, um, it was a game, like, it seems like it's a game I'd want to play, but then the, just the brutal punishing difficulty was just something. I was like, I don't want to put myself through that. So, anyway, forgot about Sekiro. But I have not played that. But I was interested, but I just I haven't played it. Um, anyway, Elden Ring was announced. It's like, oh, here we go. Just the, uh, open world Dark Souls. And, you know, I was fine with that. I don't have anything, I don't have no, ne I have no negativity or animosity towards FromSoft and their games or the, the people, you know, that I do have a little bit of animosity against the people that love to play them because they, f they fancy themselves like this small clique but these games are massively popular. So, like, a huge amount of people play these games. It's not like you're, like, some small fringe gamer. You're, like, part of a massive group of people that love these games. So, like, I always find that kind of funny. But that's not important. That's just kind of as a person from the outside. Like, oh, well, we're just our smart group. But we love these hard, difficulty, difficult games. It's like, whatever, dude. Everyone plays your fucking game. You know? There's probably more... Souls players and there are Gran Turismo players. Look, at I've re I've referenced Gran Turismo twi twice in this uh, this podcast. That's just for you, uh, Tony Death. Um, anyway, so you know, open world Dark Souls was coming out. George R R Martin, you know, he's collaborating uh, with the developers to bring this massive game and I was like that's cool they have a new thing coming out I didn't you know thought nothing of it and uh you know the game just slowly got made and little teases I believe there, there was a beta test that everyone seemed to like for the most part in the game they tried it I didn't you know I didn't obviously I didn't get invited to do that because you know I'm not into that so you know people thought it was cool it's like okay it's gonna be this cool game and it's gonna come out and uh that'll be the end of it I'll 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 go play whatever game I'm going to play and all the souls people will play their souls open world souls game. But something happened to me. Like, you know, I guess normal old Ian would have bought Horizon Forbidden West or you know, I don't know. But at some point my interests in video games kind of changed. I I started losing interest in the uh just the very samey open worldness of video games. Like, here's a quest. Follow the quest marker. Get your shit and come back. And it's like the Ubisoftification of open world games. Not that I'm hating on Ubisoft, but you know, I mean, that's every one of their games is that. Like, I was playing Division Two prior 
to Elden Ring. And I was enjoying it. I had I came back to it, hadn't played it in a very long time. And, you know, I, I finally like completed the main campa- campaign because, you know, I just kind of bounced off of it because I was uninterested. I came back to it. But it's just that kind of here. Here's a here's a quest. Go do go do this thing. Here's a line that'll tell you how to get there. And I mean, the game basically plays it, you know, itself for you. And uh, I don't know. I was just getting burnt out on open world games, and I and as that was happening, the launch of Horizon Forbidden West was approaching, and I just I just had no interest in that video game. I just like I'm I'm sure it's bigger and better than the first one, but I played the first one and I'm pretty sure whatever happens in that first one the same shit happens in the sequel. So like I just have no real interest in playing that for some reason, you know. And so while I was e- experiencing that as a gamer, uh and as that game was launched and released and everyone was glowing about it, and it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, of course it is. But I just have no interest in playing that. That's fine. Elden Ring was on the horizon. And I, at that point, I still had no interest in playing Elden Ring. But all of a sudden, you know, there's this little bit of hype and uh, people are, you know, the reviews start popping and it's just, it's crazy amount of just like positive... And you should never really buy into the hype on the games. I, I feel that's like a, not a good thing. But you know what? But I, I I bit it like a fish. You know, just like that lure. Just like I just nailed it. Bam. And uh, I, I bought it. I bought the game. You know, I mean, I was. I mean, prior to me, I, I mean, I not only did I buy it, I actually pre. Technically, I pre-ordered it. Which I, I, which is you know, weird. Anyway, and so I just remember the like the night before it unlocked on my system, I was just watching YouTube videos on the character creation and the classes and trying to figure out like what what I was gonna decide to choose and uh, you know just my, what my options were. I and I don't. <sighs> I don't do that. I I don't know why I I bought so heavily into the hype of this game. It's it's it's, it's just not, not really something I do uh, normally. So I'm just watching fucking YouTube videos on Elden Ring the night you know the night before it launches or op- opens for me. Uh, and that kind of goes into the game. So like, Elden Ring is obviously it's an open world RPG with you know pretty sometimes pretty brutal fucking combat. But at the beginning, you create your character and you choose your class. Now, one of these YouTube videos, and this, oh, I, I should have fucking looked up the video. I, I guess I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, I should, uh, fuck it. Uh, I'll mention it in the next episode. But uh, there was one YouTuber, YouTube creator, he made a video, and his, his argument was for choosing Wretch. Because all the other classes, you start at a higher level with a with a certain amount of skill uh, skill points, and you have your set armor and you have a set weapon already. So you're already you're cl- you're already building towards a class. You know whatever. The wretch has basic all their all their stats are at ten, and they start at level one. And you're starting. You have no armor, and your starting weapon is a club. Now this guy's video's argument was. You can always go back, if you like the game, you can always go back and choose any of those classes and experience the game, and that'll be that. And you'll know what that is. But you'll never truly not know what you want to do. Like, you're, you're fully taking control of your build if you start at Wretch. Now, this is also makes it the game a little harder... Because you're just kind of given what you're given. So, I don't know why that sounded interesting to me. And I don't know why I decided to add that extra layer of difficulty to my game. But that was my choice. I said, this guy is making... I might have been a little drunk. But that guy's opinion made a lot of sense to me. And I feel really bad. Man, is it in my history? It's got to be in history somewhere, uh, but it made a lot of a lot of sense to me. Like, why not? You know, 
not only that, but you know, you kind of start out half naked and you got a club. I don't know. I thought it would be a fun thing to do. So that's that was my choice. That's the that's the problem with that. I think a little bit as I started playing is that I don't because I know nothing about these games. I don't really know the builds like what people build, like a dexterity build or a or a, what is it a parry dexterity build or a you know I don't know my my build is like all over the place. I feel like I fuck up so much because I just haven't really. I mean I've started to focus on some things now, but in the beginning I was just kind of like. Oh, what? What am I doing? Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, where is this video? Yeah, it's probably way, way back. Does it even go back far enough for me to find it? Oh. Pick Wretch as your starting class, Elden Ring. Ratatoskr on YouTube. R-A-T-A-T-O-S-K-R. Rata, rat. To Tosker. Anyway, that was the video I watched. He convinced me to choose Wretch. There you go. Um, anyway, getting into the game. Um, it does feel very like other Souls games I've tried in the beginning where you just kind of. I don't know. It's dark and you kind of in a dungeon. Some story lays out before you. Um, and then there's a moment where you're like unleashed into the world and you get destroyed by a boss. I guess a boss you can, can actually beat, but I felt like it was impossible for me to fucking do anything to this boss with a fucking wooden club. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I got destroyed and it just felt like that was a boss that, you know, uh, you're going to lose to anyway. And then that's what kind of brings you into the open world. I should say, while this is a review in progress, this is probably going to be very heavily uh, a spoiler-filled uh, podcast. Like, there's going to be a lot of spoilers, probably, because I'm just going to talk about stuff and uh, as it happens to me. And uh, so I imagine by the time this starts coming out, most people who are playing the game have already come across this stuff. People who haven't played the game and are thinking about it, uh, I will say this. As a person who's never cared about Souls games but bought into this one, I really like this game. And I think if you're open-minded enough and uh, can find the loop, the game loop, you should definitely try it. That'll be my kind of high high level, you know, top, or my very top down looking like, hey man, before you go on from here and get spoiled, if you want to stop this review, just go try the game. It's really fucking good. It's awesome. It, I think it lives up to all the hype. That's just my opinion, as, especially as a person who's never got into these games before. Now from here, moving forward, I'll probably spoil some stuff. You probably don't want to listen to that until after you've, I don't know. You do what you want to do. It's free fucking country. Just don't fucking come at me if I spoil something. All right? All right, got a deal? All right. Anyway. So anyway, after you get annihilated annihilated by this boss, you're out into this open world, and I'm half naked with a wooden club. And it's true. I mean, this game does very little... Like, there's, like, no hold ha hand-holding, really. There's like Occasionally, there's a little menu that pops up, or a little, like, uh, little full-screen graphic that says, you can do this and this go here and then that's it it's like it doesn't really there's no there's no like okay what what the fuck am i supposed to do now so you just kind of like venture off into the world and you actually feel like you're actually adventuring at this point because most games will just hold your hand and you follow the quest markers and they'll tell you to squat down and hide behind bushes and they can't see you it does all that stuff this game doesn't really do any of that shit and uh so you go you set off and you start, you know, experiencing things you come across, you know, you're kind of uh I guess what used to be in Souls games like the 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 fire fire pits or fire campfires. These are like these little uh light oh my god, oh places of grace. Oh, light places. 
places of grace that you know you kind of like you uh sink your game to and they're like a saving point and they're also it's where you level up and it's where you fast travel uh all you guys that have played Elden Ring already know all this those of you who haven't or listened to this have no clue what I'm talking about so you come across these things you come across NPCs that give you that are either like uh uh you know uh They'll give you like a story, kind of tell you about the story, and, and kind of they tell you areas you should go to, but never is that, this is the best part of the game, never is any of that shit really pinpointed. There's never a marker. You can place your own markers, but they'll, they're will they never going to give you a marker for something. They're not going to say, oh, it's over here, just go, and then the little like line to the quest you just follow the line to the quest that never happens in this game so every time you step out into the world and they tell you to go somewhere you're literally adventuring and trying to figure out how to get there i mean the map in this game is literally your friend like you're literally trying to figure out where to go and i i love it i would think i you know i used to be like i don't want to deal with that but in this game it's kind of all i want to deal with i like the idea and you know what's awful? Let's if this game did allow you to did give you quest markers and did give you the line to follow it, I'd probably just use it. You know? Cuz like games like uh, Assassin's Creed, the newer ones, the big ones, they have adventure mode. It starts with the quest markers off and uh, or or the the option to turn them off, but I never do. This game just doesn't give you the option and says, just go figure it out. And there's something very freeing about that. And once once you get off out into the world and you're adventuring, you just come start to come across things. And it's like... And then it's a Souls game. So you go into these places, and then you just get destroyed. You just fucking get destroyed. So, like, then you just find... Like, I, I imagine, like, most... Most people that have played this game, that first little uh, camp of people or uh, soldiers, you just sit there and you just learn, A, when you're like a wretch, you just learn to kill one <laughs> successfully. I'm sure people that have played Souls games in the past are successful really you know, quickly. Me, it took a while. And then you find out the best way to kill them all. And then you can kind of grind that, you know? You can grind it, you know, for runes to level yourself up and, you know, get gear and be able to use certain weapons. But it's funny in the beginning when you hit that first kind of camp with the with the troops and I'm just like, uh, I'm just getting my ass kicked and you kill one. I was like, oh, I can actually kill people with a, a wooden club and you slowly start killing them and you slowly get better weapons and you slowly and then the next time you come to you you leave and you do something and you die or whatever and you come back and he's like well I'm going to have to, I'm going to regrind that area again and you grind it out and you you get better and better and better and better until you know you've moved on in the game let's say but every once in a while I find it kind of nostalgic to come back to that camp and just lay waste to it for no fucking reason other than the first time I came through here, you motherfuckers destroyed me. Now I'm just going to fucking destroy you guys. Just for fucking fun. I don't even know why. I just find some kind of thrill in going through that fucking camp and just destroying them. When, I don't know. Anyway. But eventually, at a certain point, you can't, you know, if we go back a little ways. When you're starting out, at a certain point, you can't just stay in that area. You gotta, You got to adventure out. You gotta adventure out into the world and find things and and what Souls games are about, fighting bosses. And for the longest for early on in the game, for the longest time, I was I, I found a lot of bosses. But I was afraid, I was just like, I've always sucked at these games that I was afraid that I wouldn't ever <laughs> be able to beat a boss. <laughs> you know, early on. I was just like, well, I'm just gonna play this and then I'm gonna get stuck on a boss and then I'm gonna bounce off. But this game does a lot of cool things that I guess other Souls games don't. They have the summons where you can get, like, early on, you get, like, I'm sure you've seen it in gameplay. You get the, the wolf pack. Uh, you can get a bunch of different ones, other different ones. You can get some other, like, fighter summons that uh, certain NPCs you can find in the world, and they'll fight along your side. Um, and so there's things that do make the combat, combat easier, but 
by no means does it make the combat easy. You know, it's like there's. I mean, you can still just get totally one shotted. Like, if you're not fucking paying attention or doing your shit, what you're supposed to, the shit will still own you. Anyway, early on, there's a super easy boss. Once I got the wolves, I had I had gone to there's a cave close to the starting area, and uh, I'd gone in there by myself, and he kicked my ass, and I said, oh, I'm not gonna go back there. And I kind of played around, and I leveled up a little bit, got some better weapons, and then I got these. I had the wolves, and I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to go back in there. And I went back in there, and I fucking just beat him, you know? And I felt so good about that. It really gave me a boost. Now, it's that's probably the easiest fucking boss in the whole fucking game. Let's be honest. It's like a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's one of the open world bosses in that in the cave. I feel like the game has a, has like the main kind of main story bosses, the Elden Lords. It has the kind of side quest bosses, and then there's a bunch of other bosses, just random bosses in the world that are, uh, uh, I, they're real bosses. They're just not in the open world. Then there's like mini or mini bosses. I guess you would call like the, I don't know what is the uh, who I don't know. I know so so little about this game yet. I have learned so much. I feel like anytime you felled an enemy, that's kind of a boss. That's I guess that's my opinion. Um, anyway, maybe someone can correct me. Maybe someone can't. But anyway, when I beat that first boss, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And so I just kept grinding, grinding, leveling up. Um, and, you know, I get to another boss. And then I get my ass kicked. And it's like, well, this boss is incredibly tough. I can't come back here for a while. And uh, so I leave. And I, you know, you just kind of adventure around. You're just kind of adventuring around. And then slowly the story kind of unfolds. The story's kind of like, the story's kind of like barely holding the game together, in my opinion. It's just, it's like, you're a tarnished and you're going to fight all these demigods to take over the Elden Ring. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, and there's these side quests that are pretty kind of flimsy and but you know, it it all feeds into the lore of the game. So and when you come across it because it's so you're so story starved, unlike a game like say Horizon or Assassin's Creed that just always giving you story, you're still kind of lore or story starved that you'll take it because it's like, okay. Yeah, all right. This is this is a big thing happening. And then it's, it's really not, but it's it's just it's really interesting how they give you nothing and then you just want it. I just you anyway, at a certain point you've killed like four or five bosses. Uh you've figured out that game loop. You see why people like these games. And you start to think that okay, I do not suck. I can learn this type of game. I can, uh, you know, just want rune. I just want to farm runes, you know? There's like there's a part of you that like wants to open the entire map and see everything. There's there's a part of you that wants to like just I don't know. I just really enjoy. It. I just think it's it's working. I'm uh so uh, where am I? I'm about 40, I'm 40 hours in. I've killed the first, uh, demigod, Elden Ring holder guy, uh, what is it? Godric, the grafted. So I have, I've got that one. I did beat him and that was fun. <laughs> uh, and you know, I've, it's just, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm sure everyone who's a, souls player who just like is just devouring this game i have to like take my time a little more i have to grind a little bit more to get my shit up um graphically let's talk about graphics of the game graphically the game is it looks like a solid ps4 game i mean i mean the art design is phenomenal i think the art design is fucking sweet as hell dude uh like it's edgy and dark and whimsical and fantastic but graphically it's not like the most beautiful game that'll blow your socks off it's uh it, it is better than any of their other games i would say i mean i do find my character you know 
she's a hot kind of warrior chick, so I, I'm digging that. But it's not like, you know, I think there's been a lot of, uh, you know, people have talked about like how Blue Point and Demon Souls is like beautiful, and this game is not quite that level, but. You know, whatever. This game, it totally works. Everything works. I love it. The art design, though. I mean, the the creature designs, the it's the the, the weapon designs. A lot. I mean, everything is just the mute. Holy shit! The music I played earlier. And there's so much sh awesome shit working for this game that it just sucks you in. Um. Uh. Let's see. There's the open world, the lands between, um, and then there is like obviously like kind of they call them legacy dungeons. And that's where like the kind of the main guys hang out um and that's kind of like playing kind of more of a classic souls game because it's less open worldly you're just kind of going through a castle or something there's tombs that are kind of the same way uh and then the game has like a fucking un like there's the op overworld map and then there's like spoiler there's like this underworld of the map that's like a whole nother level like it's crazy crazy uh uh, the level design or the open world design is really uh, just brilliant. It's very vertical. Uh, and it really makes you want to check everything out. You look at the map. You look at the world. It's cool to see how everything comes together. And is a, is a, when you're at a certain, like, let's say you're overlooking a cliffside and you look out over the game. It's really cool to see, like, oh, I've been there. Or I want to go there next. And you and it's all that kind of you can uh um it just all it, it really works and wraps around together and it really gives you that sense of like you've adventured around the map uh it's pretty cool i don't know i am so into the game uh i, I i've lost i've actually lost count of how many bosses i've defeated um my build let's talk about my build uh I don't even know what you would call my build. It's probably mostly sword and shield. So I have like a great sword and a shield, and that's mainly what I rock. But I will also rock, I am also trying to do magic. So I'm trying to bring magic into it. I like to do sword and magic on the offhand, <laughs> uh, but that doesn't always work for certain things. <laughs> so I find myself switching around to a lot of different things. I feel like the bosses also, some of the bosses kind of demand that. Like, some of the quick bosses, I kind of switch to, like, some quicker thing, like a, a quick offhand to, like, just keep pressure on them while I hit heavy blows with, like, a heavier weapon in the right hand. I just, I find myself constantly changing things. But, like, when I fight, like, a, a, a pretty, like, major boss, um, I'm generally s sword and shield. So that's kind of mainly what I'm rocking. Unless the the interesting also about this game, uh, what was a big selling point is in the open world, you're riding a horse, a mount. So there's like a lot of uh, mounted combat that works pretty well. Um, and so there's certain bosses that, you know, your quickness on the horse really helps your ability to take them down. Um what was uh there's uh there's these bosses that guard the erd trees which are like there's there's like the main erd tree which you've probably seen the the visuals for it's the glowing yellow or golden tree and then there's like minor ones and each at each minor one there's like a a big ass tree boss that you fight that guards it like the avatar of the tree or something um I've only defeated one of those, but that was like a pretty easy to like just run around it on the horse and take it down. Um, um, so like, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of different ways to approach battles. I guess I haven't played other Souls games. I'm not. I don't really know how it works in those games, but I I find the diversity in combat a lot of fun. You know, it's not like you're just going in there and trying to do one thing all the time. So that's super cool. Uh, what is something else I wanted to? Want to uh, we got bosses, we got graphics, the story's okay. I mean, it was pretty good. Was, um, music's awesome. Uh, I haven't tried any co-op or multiplayer. Um, 
I don't haven't actually been invaded. I've been invaded by players, but I think those are just computer NPCs. I don't think I've actually been invaded. I think they do that to like let you know this is like the the tutorialized version of it. I don't think I've actually been invaded by anybody. Uh what else? There's so much I could talk about. I, I guess I need some. I guess I do need someone else to sound off against, ask me questions, uh, you know, and and that's what I'm gonna do. And then part two, I'm gonna have a guest on who's also playing the game, and then we can kind of talk about the game more. Um, I'm I'm gonna kind of a list of things I for, I'm like. Oh shit, you forgot to mention this or that. Um, but yeah, so far, wonderful game, beautiful game. When I got it, when I bought it, I didn't think I was gonna beat it. I was like, ah, I'm not gonna. I'll play this for a few hours. I'll see what everyone's talking about. And then as I got to 20 hours, I was like, man, I could maybe get try to get close to beating it, but you know, it's probably gonna take me all fucking year. I don't know. <laughs> and then as I hit 40 hours, I was like, I, I, I should. I'm gonna try and beat this game. And I think. Instead of just doing a podcast of me reviewing the game, I'm going because this is probably going to take me a while. I'll do this like journey with the game and see if my opinions change as it gets closer, um, as I get closer to the end, or if certain bosses are just like destroy me and I give up on the game. I thought it might be more interesting if I did this. So, uh, we've started out, you know, um, and yeah, that's my plan, and I hope you guys are interested in coming along with me while I do that. Um, oh, I know what I want to talk about. Some of the things that do bother me about this game, um, actually, there's not really. Well, there's a couple. I, the camera can be a pain in the ass sometimes, dude. I mean, you can uh, uh, you can get backed into a corner, and then it just doesn't. It really isn't helpful. So you kind of cussing at that. Sometimes you get fucking stuck on trees and shit that drives me nuts, but that's, you know, you roll into a fucking table or some shit. I don't know. You just get pinned up against something, and that always drives me nuts. And and a lot of that has to do because the the the, the locking on to the character, onto the enemies, is kind of obnoxious sometimes. And the um, you you kind of learn to deal with it, and you find out. But, like, sometimes it's just like... Uh, like with magic, I have like a certain magic spell that like it shoots and then it has homing, so it homes to the targeted. But sometimes you'll be fucking on the target, and then it'll fucking shift fucking targets, and or it'll just they'll they'll be far enough away, all of a sudden be just gone, or they're still there but they've somehow got untargeted and I'm not targeted anything anymore and you just waste your magic. So there's sometimes there's a little there's a little jank, but I haven't had any crashes or any stuttering or any the game is running really good on PS5. I have I mean those are a, a, a lot of that just feels like maybe I'm not good enough or I'm just having uh you know, I'm just having, you know, just normal gaming issues, you know. But um the game itself, I think, runs really well. I, I've really enjoyed most of the combat. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, this podcast. I would really like to know what everyone thinks. Um, uh, what else? Oh, as I, as, I, as, I, as I shift... So, we got... When you pre-order this, or you probably if you just buy it, I don't remember. You get this... Uh, Elden Ring Adventure Guide, but it basically only adventure guides you the beginning part of the game. Oh, yeah, see here? How to travel in between, you got legacy dungeons, mines, caves, underground crypts. Um, the map's interesting. Uh, you have to find map pieces, but they're pretty easy to find on the map. Like, there's no tower. You don't climb up a tower and you don't sink, you know, you don't do any of that kind of bullshit. Um... There is a slight, I guess there is, the Sights of Grace, certain ones do show a light path. They show you a general direction towards, like, main story objectives or where you should go. But on the map, it's just kind of a, a like, a, a slash towards a direction. And on in the world, it's just kind of a hinted light. But that's it. It's, just, it's only at the Sights of Grace. 
it'll show hey the side of grace says the light goes that way but then that direction is like okay there's so much shit over there what the fuck you know um the amount of secret shit you kind of come across and find is super cool i just um i just it's the most kind of like fun adventuring around in a game I've had in a very long time and then you prepare yourself like you'll do rune run, you like do runs where you're just trying to level up and then you'll do runs where it's like okay I'm leveled up I'm built let's go fight this boss you know because you don't want to you know go into a boss and get annihilated with like 20,000 runes because then you're just fucked <laughs> unless you go in there and beat him but if you go in there again and beat him and then then you're really fucked. But um, no, it's just the risk reward, the gameplay loop. I get it. I just totally get it. I'm super into it. Uh, I'm really excited to see where my journey in this game goes. I keep kind of kind of wrapping this up, but I'm gonna wrap it up now. Um, but uh, I hope you guys all stick around and uh, join me on this journey. Uh, um, but yeah, that's my review in progress, part one. Of Elden Ring. Um, let's, let's get this music back going, huh? Maybe? What do you think? Whoops. There we are. I want to thank you all for listening and remind you that you can leave feedback on Twitbook, Instaface, and Gramter at Couch Club Shows. All one word. No hyphen. Uh, remember to please subscribe, share, and maybe leave us. Usually there's more of us. Today it was just me on solo. But remember to please, uh, you know, you know, leave us an iTunes review. That would be super awesome. We haven't gotten an iTunes review in forever. And if you leave an iTunes review, I will read it on the air. Even if it sucks. If it sucks, though, make it really funny. Not gross, but funny. Ha <laughs> ha. Good luck. I want to thank you guys for listening and for me sitting alone on the couch tonight. I'm Ian, reminding you to please be excellent to each other.